Hello, I'm Natasha. Welcome to the Organized Frenzy podcast about knitting. At least 99% about knitting. Um, I live in Welland with my boyfriend and three cats. And knitting is pretty much what consumes all of my spare time. Just ask Jesse, my boyfriend. Um, he sometimes asks if there is anything else that I do. Not really. <laughs> um, so I'm on Instagram as Organized Frenzy and Ravelry as Natasha Hillier. I'll tell you how I came up with the name Organized Frenzy. I originally tried to get the username Organized Chaos, but it was taken. And so what do I do? Go to thesaurus.com and <laughs> search um, similar words to chaos. And so I saw frenzy on there and I thought, oh, that kind of works. So might as well just use it. Um, I guess organized frenzy or organized chaos or whatever is how I consider my life to be. Not that I'm, you know, it's, it's super crazy, but I like to be organized and, um, my organization skills and method may make sense to only me. So it's a bit chaotic or frenzy that way, I guess. Um, but uh, I wanted to start podcasting as just a way to um, share what I'm working on and things that I'm doing. I've tried blogging. I uh, It's not something that... I love to do so I thought I would just uh, try and do a podcast and see uh, how that works and I also thought it would be fun to, uh, to knit while I'm recording so won't be able to do it the entire time but this is uh, one of my many whips and uh, it's my cozy memories or scrappy memory blanket whatever you want to call it this is leftovers from socks that I've knit um, and it's just garter stitch I wanted to keep it super simple I initially was going to crochet just you know for something different but I wanted to do corner to corner crochet and I did like honestly like three squares and I wasn't loving how it turned out so I said forget this I'm going to knit and it's just going to be plain garter stitch and I'm just going to keep going until I run out so I'll give you an example this is like that I am done with for socks. I previously rewound all my cakes into um, mini cakes so it was a bit more organized. But what I have decided to do is just make a giant cake and so this is a few of the scraps I just kept going until uh, the yarn winder was full and um, I like this better because then it's all just it's together and this started out super tight but now it's actually squishable so uh, yeah so this is what I'm working out of and I'm actually wearing the socks that I knit out of this pink yarn right now which is kind of funny so I figured I would just work on this while I film part of the podcast anyways um, kind of give me an excuse to work on it because there's a lot of projects that I've got going and you know it's this blanket is something that tends to get pushed uh, to the back burner because it's not uh, 
there's no deadline on it it's gonna be I'm gonna be working on it for quite some time so it uh, tends to not come first for projects even though I love working on it because it's so simple and it's just it's brain like you don't have to it's mindless that's the word I was gonna say brainless it's not very nice um, you really don't have to think about it I have um, for the most part been weaving in ends as I go I've got a couple but I don't mind weaving in ends so you know maybe I'll just save it until I have a few or maybe keep uh, keep a darning needle in that basket as well I do have a, a tote bag that I can put that into if I'm traveling somewhere or um, bringing knitting with me I want to bring the blanket so I don't think that's going to happen too often. I think this is just going to be a project for home. I mean, it's quite portable right now with the size of it, but if it gets, you know, as it grows, it's going to be a bit too big to uh, to bring with me. So for now, it's just in that, um, in that bucket. And it's good because it's got a handle. I can just easily carry that with me. So let me tell you... Um, how I came to be a knitter. Um, my knitting story, if you will. My mom was pregnant with my youngest sister. So I'm the oldest of three girls. So she was pregnant with my youngest sister and I was nine at the time. She had my sister when I was 10. Our birthdays are actually two days apart, so that's kind of cool. Um, but we were on a... Uh, on a road trip to see my grandparents and it was about a it's about a seven hour uh drive they don't live there now but it's about it was about seven hours to get to where they lived and so my mom was knitting a just like a gray wool poncho uh in the round <clears throat> for my sister and it was just all stockinette but it's a cute little poncho and I don't even remember if it was me who asked my mom, oh, I, like, can I try that? Or if it was me who showed the interest, but I think it was. So I tried it and I liked it. And then um, I think we must have gotten home or something and she got me started on my own first knitting project, which was, drum roll, a pillowcase. <laughs> um, I just think it's so funny. Um, she, I don't know if it was like her own knitting needles. I don't think she would have bought me my own pair because she had a ton. But she gave me all these scraps of yarn of hers. And, uh, you know, she, I think she must have helped me cast on. But I just was knitting in garter stitch. And this pillowcase was so wonky. My gauge was so off. I was like 10 years old, like I said. Um, my gauge was so off and, you know, with the different yarn weights, like it was really lumpy and bumpy and I don't think I had too many dropped stitches. If I did, I got my mom to help me fix it. Um, but uh, I didn't work on that consistently and I've been very on and off with knitting. I think I've knit some scarves and hats and tried to do some mittens and stuff and then it wasn't until um I think like must have been six or seven years ago I maybe even maybe not maybe five years I don't really know um I knit my first pair of socks it was our family friend Amy who uh loved to knit socks and she wanted to show my mom and I because we liked knitting and we went to a yarn shop that she liked one weekend and uh, we got some sock yarn and we got double pointed needles. Um, and then she had this pattern, I think it was from a library book or something and she just had a photocopy and so she copied her photocopy for us. Um, and it's just a very traditional cuff down sock, uh, heel flap and gusset and then toe decreases, Kitchener, whatever. So um, I knit that and I learned, of course, it was my first pair of socks, so I learned heel flap and gusset construction and uh, 
I did toe decreases and um, I don't think I can knit up high like that anymore. Let me just bring this down here. So I finished that first sock and I did Kitchener stitch for the first time and it was not very good. <laughs> um, and then I did the second sock and I don't know if there was a knot in the yarn or if I had cut the strand too early or um, I think I had, oh, what did I do? Or maybe I only had a 50 gram ball, but for some reason, I don't know what happened with this second sock, um, but I actually ran out of yarn just as I was so close to finishing the toe. So it was like a centimeter short of um, the end of the toe when I didn't have enough yarn left to Kitchener. And so I think what I did was I wove this yarn through all the um, loops on the needle just, just to be able to close it up and Oh my gosh, the first one fit pretty good. Um, the toe was a bit pointier than I would have liked. I have quite wide feet. I don't have pointy feet at all. So, um, I mean, that was something that I wanted to change for next time. So I had made that plan. Um, but I didn't really, I wore these socks like a couple times just cause the one was wonky and it, you know, that's not something that, uh, that I loved about it. So, I think I knit a second pair of socks and gave those away. I can't remember if I actually knit those or not. Um, but then I was kind of off knitting again. I was in university and uh, I, I didn't have a yarn shop close to me. Even if I did, I didn't have a car. So I just, I put it down for a while. But then this past January, or maybe it was even before that in December, I decided that I wanted to knit again and I wanted to knit socks. So I ordered some stuff from Knit Picks and I could not remember what size needles that I needed. Um, I knit my socks on 2.25 millimeter needles, but I'd ordered two millimeter needles. Um, and I knew I wanted to do two at a time. Um, and I knew I wanted to do toe up. So I was just practicing, like the, the day that I received those wood needles, I was just practicing. What happens? Jessie sits on the one needle, it breaks. Oh my gosh, I was so angry. But found another local, online local kind of uh, yarn shop that had needles and so what I use now is Addy Turbo Rockets. Um, I use a 32 inch or 80 centimeter uh, needle and then when I do my um, toe, when I cast on and do the toe increases I have two pairs of 24 inch needles. Um, and that's what I do my toe increases, my heels, and my cuffs and cast off. I do those on the shorter needles and keep those two at a time socks separate. But the rest of the socks I do uh, two at a time, which is wonderful for my OCD. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so that's kind of how I got back into knitting again. There's just something about hand knit socks, like it's, I don't know. I was just obsessed with uh, with the idea of it, and I'm still obsessed with hand knit socks. It is mostly what I knit. I'm I am venturing into um, other things. I want to knit everything, of course, but hand knit socks is uh, what I knit most of the time. So that's the main thing, uh, I guess that I knit and I'll share um, a little bit more about my socks in a little bit. I do want to talk about uh, finished objects quickly. I am wearing a finished object and this is a shawl by Melanie Berg. I'm sure you will recognize it. I'm not even gonna bother. 
trying to pronounce it because I can't. I am terrible at pronunciations, so I'm not going to bother. Um, but uh, this is the first, um, actually, so the last time that I was into knitting, um, I had seen this pattern on R Ravelry and uh, I was obsessed with it. I was like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. I have to knit it. Like, I love the colors that she used and I knew I was going to use different colors, but uh, I bought it and finally knit it like five or six years later. So I'm happy that I finally did. And for, you know, for my first shawl, um, it made sense that this was going to be the one just because of how long it had been in my library for. So I got my yarn online. I can't say the yarn name either. Um, but just, uh, there are 50 gram balls, so I got two balls of each. And um, I wanted a slightly different color theme, but uh, this worked based on, you know, I don't want to spend a ton because I didn't know how much I was going to enjoy shawl knitting. So this pink and purple, I wish that there was a bit more contrast. I mean, it looks okay the way it is, but the contrast between the gray and pink I love. Pink is my favorite color, so. I love this finishing section here and the eye cord cast off. This is the wrong side, which I think is still really neat looking. Anyways, so this is the first and only shawl that I have um, knit. I've got some works in progress, work in progress shawls right now, but uh, I'll share one of them in just a sec. Actually, yeah, sure. Let's move on to works in progress. So they are both in fringe field bags. This is what I keep my socks in. It's very rectangular right now because I've got a lot of yarn shoved in here. Um, I'm knitting a bunch of socks for Christmas. This is the last pair. This is for my middle sister who chose the yarn herself. Um, and she chose three different colors of yarn. And I said, uh, what am I gonna do with this? <laughs> she wanted striped, striped socks. Uh, so I said, you know what, it's like a bit more work to make stripes in the socks, but okay, if that's what you want. Uh, so I just started them last night. I'll show you this one. <laughs> just the toe. That's all I have right now. And these are the 24 inch circulars. Um, it is a little bit tight to knit with this. It may be uncomfortable for some people. I'm used to it because that's what I've been doing for the past little while. Um, but this is the, um, one of the socks. So on the pattern that I'm doing is just knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one on the front and then just plain on the back just to kind of break up those colors. But that's what I'm working on. So the yarn is, um, Drops Fable. Let's see if I can take these out nicely. The purple is this one. And then next is kind of this speckly polka dotty spotted one. And then number three is just a nice gray. So I got three um, 50 gram balls of yarn and um, I just, I wound them up um, out of the store bought skein or whatever and I wound them and then I split them in half and this is what I, I use a sock ruler to measure my socks I used to count I'm sorry that you can't really see this I used to count my rows and it gets like, I don't mind doing it, but it gets to be a bit much. And I, this, the sock roller is just so much easier. Because you can actually, like, try it on your foot without having your, like, putting it on your foot. So if you know how long the person's foot is, then you're good to go. 
and I just use a little um, notebook to oh, my sister's socks right here. Um, I just use a notebook to keep track of everything that I'm doing. Um, and then that way, you know, if I go to make that person another pair of socks or there was something I liked or didn't like, then I can adjust that as I need to. And I have um, just this little notions thing. It was like three or four dollars from Michael's, just in the jewelry section. But I keep my stitch markers and everything in here. And I have some snips, but I also have embroidery scissors. To keep everything in here and I use needle cozies this is just a Christmas one that I got Christmas sock set from Lizzie Ann yarns um, anyways so those are the socks that I'm working on right now and my other whip is another field bag I I do not like camo, so I was really surprised that I wanted this one. And I got this as well. I just got this one yesterday, but this one's a project for my mom for Christmas. It's a shawl by Mina Phillip, La Moya, I believe. That's how you say it. But I'm doing this one, so it's it's not as deep. So it's brioche, and I think this is my first brioche project. So this is it. That's the right side, and this is the wrong side. I'm not gonna show it too much, it's kind of, it's almost done and so it's kind of at that stage where it's hard to maneuver but I will show it all eventually when I'm done um, this is Madeline Tosh Tosh Merino light Popoki I think is what it's called apparently it's the Hawaiian word for cat which I think is really cute but it's just this crazy multicolored yarn and this is my other one this is um, Malabrigo sock in rayon ver Bert <laughs> if you weren't uh, didn't know how to pronounce, pronounce the French word so it does have like a tiny bit of green in it it's pretty cool so that is another whip. I started this so long ago. This is the very first Christmas present that I started working on in this summer, I think. So I'm gonna be really mad at myself if I'm not done it. But uh, since this is a new fringe bag, this handle is still really stiff. I think I'm gonna put some oil on it. Make it nice and soft and hopefully darken, darken it a little bit as well. Um, okay. Next, I want to talk about socks. I just wanted to um, talk a little bit about them because that's how I got back into knitting and a big, uh, big obsession of mine. So that first pair of socks that I was talking about, um, yeah, I took them apart. And I rewound the yarn because I didn't like the socks. I wasn't going to wear them. They didn't, like, it, you know, when you've got something weird, like your toe is not even finished. Come on. Oh, and the cast on was really tight. And I think the first one, it was really tight. And then the second one had the unfinished toe. So, like, they were so imperfect compared to what I wear now. It was a great learning experience to knit those, but... I just figured I would take them apart so that I could resalvage the yarn and actually do something that I liked with it. So um, I have another ball this size and all I'm gonna do is just do a toe up, probably like a shorty pair of socks, um, just see how far I get with them. Um, and 
and then just yeah see how that goes uh, so I still knit my socks two at a time toe up and I do Judy's Magic cast on and uh, that is what I did for this next pair of socks so this is the first pair of socks that I knit um, I knit them on Knitter's Pride Carbons so those were the needles that I bought when my Knit Picks wooden needles broke. And these are going to look kind of weird just because they're not really blocked. <laughs> um, but these, um, it's just a pattern, just like a ribbed pattern um, from that book, um, Two at a Time Toe Up Socks that I got. Um, and so... I followed the pattern pretty much exactly and they cast on like I said I did Judy's magic cast on and then I did the uh, increases and then just followed the pattern and then this one had a gusset so let me smooth this out a little bit it's had a quite actually quite a big gusset I think where did it, it started here like 45 rounds or something it was a lot so at first I thought these were a little bit too big for me um but then when I finished them and put them on it was only like slightly so I decided to keep them rather than give them away uh, and I it's a slip stitch heel which is nice and durable and then just the pattern up the rest of the sock um, and then I did a stretchy cast off by Stacy from Very Pink. I do Jenny's surprisingly stretchy cast off now. I do like it a little bit better and I find that I'm quicker with it. So at first I thought this gusset was too big. Um, I just wanted to follow the pattern but I think I had already purchased or was going to purchase the Fish Lips Kiss Heel which is what I use now. So I'm like, oh, this gusset is too big, um, whatever. After doing, so that was a pair for myself. This is a pair that I knit for Jesse, my boyfriend. So after doing Fish Lips Kiss, um, I started to incorporate a mini gusset. Can you see it? I started to incorporate a mini gusset because like I said I have wide feet and so um, I needed a little bit of extra room and it was working out okay but I'm still finding that the socks are not fitting like I want them to and then I go back to this pair and they fit like the best out of that all of the socks that I have the length is a little bit long, but the gusset, I need it. So once I finish all this uh, Christmas knitting, I've got, I'm working on that one more pair of socks and I have um, a hat and then three pairs of mittens that I want to knit as well. Mittens, I don't think I'm going to get finished, but the socks and the hat, oh, and my mom's shawl. Um, once I'm done that and then I'm able to uh, knit socks for myself, um, I am going to experiment with different um, toe up heel flap gusset things and see. See what I like and see how big of a gusset I need to fit my foot. I don't need quite this big, like I could go a little bit smaller. Maybe there. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm just going to experiment and find out exactly what is um, perfect for my own foot. Then my socks will fit amazingly. So I am very excited about, uh, about getting to try that out. And I've just got some more of that Drops Fable. Um, so just like a nice commercial yarn. It's not hand dyed or anything. So I'm not worried about them not turning out amazing. Um, because then... You know, I won't have wasted um, 
a nice hand painted or hand dyed uh, skein of yarn. So that is where I'm at with that. <clears throat> this is just one pair for my boyfriend. Bitch lips kiss. It does have the pucker, which I don't love, but I don't mind, especially when you know you're wearing it and it's it's on your foot or in your shoe or whatever. Um, so now I do a rounded toe. Sit this here and funky. These socks almost match. Anyways, um, so those are from my, boy, my boyfriend um yeah uh so i do a rounded toe and then i do uh jenny surprisingly stretchy cast off and so how i knit my socks is um like i said those 24 inch uh circulars for the cast on and the toe knit the whole thing two at a time heels i do separately on the 24 inch and then cuff and cast off I do separately as well on the uh, 24 inch everything else is on my 32 inch or 80 centimeter um, Addy turbo rockets and I do those I, d I love doing two at a time socks my OCD needs it um, I don't think I will ever do cuff down that the very first pair I did do cuff down, um, but I don't like fiddling with the cast on, and I don't like risking that cast on being too tight. Like, look how stretchy this is. It could keep going even, but it's super stretchy, and um, I don't find the cast on for toe up. I don't find that fiddly at all. I find it very fiddly to do the cuff. So that's kind of where I'm at with my sock knitting. Um, my next section. I'm going to call Knittertainment. <laughs> um, just entertainment uh, while I'm knitting. So the main thing right now is... Um, the Harry Potter, oops, sorry, I'm trying to adjust this. My main entertainment right now is the Harry Potter uh, audiobooks by Jim Dale. I'm on number five, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. So I love uh, doing that because then I don't have to watch something. If I'm watching a show while I'm knitting, I don't know, like if you can 100% focus on this show and you're knitting, good for you, but I cannot. So, um, I've, I'm a huge fan of Harry Potter and so I'm not, you know, if I miss a, a line in the book or whatever, it's not a huge deal. Um, but I'm better able to focus on that versus like two things where I have to watch, like watch my knitting and watch the show. It's easier for me to focus on listening to the book and watching my knitting so that's one of the main things um that I've been entertaining myself with while knitting and then uh watching some podcasts as well um I had started watching from episode one the grocery girls Tracy and Jody, and I am I think I have like two episodes left and then I'm all cut up so I've kind of been like dwindling like I've slowed down watching it so that I'm not caught up and then waiting for the next episode but um so I've watched them um starting in episode one <clears throat> excuse me and then I also started watching Amber the yarn hoarder I started watching her episode one as well and I think I'm about halfway through now I'm on like 13 or 14 I think actually it's been a little while since I've watch I'm hoping my episodes will be like half an hour uh, 45 minutes tops um, half an hour I hope um, so that's what I've been watching and then of course Netflix as well um, 
Riverdale I watch every week. Uh, I don't think I watched the latest episode, so I've got to got to do that. But Jane the Virgin is the other show that I've been watching. And I just finished season two a couple days ago, so I've got to start season three. But I like to uh, I wanted to watch Jane the Virgin just because it was kind of a an easy to watch show like you don't have to pay attention as much as some other shows and uh, it's good if like if you lose your focus for a little bit then it's not a big deal uh, especially when you're knitting and what if you have to tink back or if you have to correct something um, or read your pattern it's it's easy in that sense um, <clears throat> and then the last section is I'm gonna call apps I love um, just because I love going on the app store and finding a new app. Um, so this one it does pertain to knitting. It's called A Tracker. Just a letter A Tracker. Um, and you use it to time various uh, activities. So I just have all my um, projects listed. And then I can just press start when I'm uh, starting the one and uh, that way I know how long something's taken me to knit because I'm always curious I always want to know but I'm terrible at estimating times so uh, I decided I would get an app for that and uh, so that's what I've been um, using to time my uh, my projects <clears throat> and then there's actually like a, a pie chart that you can look at and uh, it tells you how long you spent on each uh, each project or it gives you like a weekday or weekend total and total time knitting. I think I started timing somewhere in June. Um, I can see how many hours I've knit since then. It's crazy. Though not nearly as much as some, I'm sure. But uh, that's one of the apps that I'm really enjoying. Um, last thing I will just show you quickly is... These are some gifting, some socks for Christmas, seven pairs of socks. And this is how I've packaged them. Just a little bag, I think micro is the size, um, just from Michaels. And I washed and blocked the socks. The socks, I just laid them flat and kind of let them dry like that so they would be flat blocked. So you can see I folded them up um, twice. I folded twice, so in half and then in half again. And I just have them just shoved in there. And then I had some cue cards as well, and I just cut those in half. And uh, I have, I can't see this. I just have some care instructions. And then I wrote the content on the back as well just because I had the yarn labels out so I figured I would. So I have to get some tissue paper but I just have that tucked in there. And uh, that's how I'm going to gift my hand knit socks. And I have some bigger bags for like the shawl and then I'm gifting the hat as well. Um, so a little bit bigger bags but yeah. I think that's kind of uh, all that I wanted to talk about for this week. I am going to, I'm going to try to film every week. Um, just like I said, it's going to just kind of be an experiment and just an outlet for me to share what I've been working on. I don't have a ton of knitters in my life, so, so I think I'm going to try and record once a week. Just, uh, I don't know, just for something to do and see how that goes. I'm thinking... I'm going to try recording on Thursdays or Fridays and hopefully uploading like the next day or uploading like on Saturday or something just to, you know to start out the weekend. Um, Chelsea from Legacy Fiber Arts, she's got her Sunday shorties on Sundays and it's just like a quick episode and I love that because some of the episodes, not that I don't love the longer episodes, it's great. But some of the longer episodes, like maybe you don't have enough time to squeeze one in. And uh, 
half an hour, you know, just a quick something is all you've got time for. So plus I don't have that much to talk about every week. So every week, every couple weeks, we'll see how it goes, but I'm going to try and do that. Um, just to see, I wonder if people will be interested in what I'm working on and what I've got to say. Um, I don't consider myself an expert or anything like that. Um, maybe, uh, not beginner, but maybe like an intermediate kn knitter. Um, there's still a few things that, you know, I've got to learn, um, but I don't know, hopefully maybe I'll be able to inspire somebody and, you know, if they've got questions on how I do anything, then feel free to ask. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to set up, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but I think I'll set up a Ravelry group, Organized Frenzy podcast, and I'll put show notes in there. Um, yeah, thanks for joining me. Hopefully there's an episode two in about a week's time. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully uh, tomorrow's Monday, so hopefully you have a good rest of the weekend a little bit uh whatever's left and uh i'll see you hopefully next week bye